I'm very happy to introduce you to a new technique in guided bone regeneration called the L-shaped technique. My name is Ronald Young. I'm from the University of Zurich and I'm trained as an oral surgeon and as a prosthodontist. I would like to introduce you to the clinical situation of a young patient with a discolored center incisor, which experienced a fracture of his root in the apical third. The X-ray clearly reveals this horizontal fracture with periapical lesions in these areas. From a risk profile point of view, he has a medium soft tissue type, but as the patient has very high expectation and a high scallop situation, we consider this case as a high risk case. In order to show you the approach, this is another case with a very similar clinical situation and the same clinical approach. In order to access to the area of regeneration, we're going to do two sulcular incision at the neighboring teeth with a microblade and a very palatally positioned crestal incision. In order to be able to do a GBR procedure in the buccal aspect, it is mandatory to have a vertical releasing incision. It is only necessary to have vertical one vertical releasing incision, which is going to be placed at the distal aspect, starting from the sulcus perpendicularly, and then to complete the vertical releasing incision by coming from the apical part towards the coronal part, touching then the initial incision in this area. With this approach, we are able to have an ideal visibility of the area where the implant needs to be placed. As a first step, the implant position is going to be defined by using a round drill and checking its position. Then it follows by using the twist drills in order to prepare the, oste the osteotomy for the implant. Then, after this drilling process, we always check the implant position by having a direction indicator to see whether we are correct from a mesodistal point of view, from a vertical point of view, and a buccal point of view. The aim is to place the implant in such a position that we stay away as far as possible from the buccal aspect and being able to deliver a screw retained reconstruction. After completing the osteotomy, the implant is going to be inserted according to the correct prosthetic position. After having the implant in place, we check the vertical position. We want to be about 2.5 to 3 millimeter away from the future crown margin. And after the implant has been placed, we can see that we have a dehiscence defect. Now we need to regenerate this defect. And as a first step, we're preparing the site by drilling holes in the apical part, more than two, which are the ones which take up then the pins to stabilize the bigot membrane, which is going to be shaped according to the defect dimensions. Now we can see here the resolvable pins made of polylactide, which are going to be placed in the holes in the apical part. In order to facilitate this process, we do multiple holes that it is easier to find than the pins. You can see here with the pin holder and the slide hammer, we can get the pins into the position. And this procedure is of utmost importance in order to stabilize the membrane, but also the graft material later on. In order to cover the exposed implant, we're going to place a autogenous bone either with or without the BIOS granules. And this is then kind of the bone regeneration part. But now in order to further go one step in the aesthetic area to do a bone contouring, we're using the BIOS collagen and shape it according to an L. We do this when the 
bias collagen is going to be wet, it's going to be a little bit easier to cut. And we cut it into the correct dimensions using a blade. Now, this L serves different aims. On the one hand, we would like to have more contour on the buccal aspect, mimicking the root prominence. On the other hand, we would like to support the soft tissue in the vertical part, primarily for prosthetic reasons and for aesthetic reasons. So it is not meant that everything is going to be turned into bone. It is meant that the buccal part turns into bone and the coronal part on top of the implant is primarily there to support the soft tissues. With some granules around, you can smooth on the margins. And as the membrane is tacked, you can now just put it underneath the palatal flap and you have a very stable augmented area. You can also nicely see the amount of stability we achieve with this technique. And we have more volume in the crestal part where it is of utmost importance for the aesthetic areas in this, in this transition zone between the soft tissue and the crown. In order to be able to close the flap, because we have now extra volume, it is necessary to do periosteal releasing incision as it has been done here. And then it follows by having the first suture at the corner of the vertical releasing incision with a 5 or 6 O suture in order to adapt to the flap in this area. Like this, we reposition the flap at the correct position. The subsequent suture is, for me, the most important one. It's the horizontal matrix. And the horizontal matrix is going to be performed with an EPDFE suturing material, which has a great elasticity, being very gentle to the wound. And this suture is important in order to keep the wound margin together. So you can see here the horizontal matrix, which is going to be performed. And like this, we're going to bring now the wound margin passively together. And then we complete the entire suturing area by having further single interrupted sutures on top of the crest and in the area of the vertical releasing incision. Sometimes you additionally add an, a 5 or 6 or suture to complete then also the crest incision in order to have there a perfect adaptation of the wound margins. And like this, we end up with a very passive suture where we have a lot of volume as exactly in the area where it is most important in the area where the future crown margin will be positioned. After a healing period of four months, we access the implant by using a, an U-shaped abutment connection, do an impression, and then being able to place a provisional crown which needs to be done in order to shape the soft tissue in order to mimic the neighboring tooth. After two months, we were able to kind of have a nice soft tissue contour. And this contour is going to be captured in a second impression in order to fabricate the final reconstruction. Here, this final all ceramic reconstruction is going to be screw retained and it mimics very nicely the neighboring tooth. And we have a very nice soft tissue quality in this area. The radiographs shows a stable bone tissue and a very nicely integrated implant. So after careful extraction with minimal damage, we need to kind of follow the different steps in order to make this case a successful case. And of this, I would like to thank you very much for your kind attention.